Cool. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so this is what you're likely going to do tonight. So you've probably got all the best intentions right now of what you're going to do tonight. Like, I'm going to meet up with some guys and I'm going to go out and fucking talk to some girls. But this is likely what you're going to do. That's probably what you're going to do for the most part. You're going to stand there and you're going to wait because your emotions are stronger than the logic that you're thinking right now. And when you go to a bar, those emotions are going to kick in. So that's, you know, the reality is some of you will go and do some approaches and whatever. But the, for the most part, you're probably going to stand there and, and wait and overthink this sort of shit. So you've got to kind of decide right now if, which camp you're going to be in. You're also probably going to get nervous and get down on yourself. Um, guys tend to think that, like, this is... You're not fucking curing cancer. You're just talking to girls. And the amount of times that, you know, we'll be out in bars and see guys just... They're, they get so down on themselves because they can't do this stuff, you know? And it's like, you know, a lot of you guys look, you know, younger, sort of early, mid-twenties. So if you go out and you don't approach a girl... I do this shit for a living and I had countless nights where I went out and I stood there like a fucking idiot and I didn't talk to anyone. So the only thing that I didn't do was I didn't like fucking start to hate myself because I didn't do this. So look, some of you are going to go out and stand there and not do anything. Just try to not get too down on yourself. Like if you commit to doing this, one day you're just going to do a random approach. Then you're going to do a couple more approaches. Then you're going to start getting some numbers and then they're going to flake you. And then it's just going to be this ongoing thing. But you won't realize that you're there until you kind of stop and look back and like go, oh shit, like it just started in one fold. So it's not the end of the world if you don't. Um, a lot of you as well, either tonight or on other nights out, you're going to start to wonder if this is actually for you. Which is fair. I don't think this is for most people. A lot of guys land in this stuff. They suss it out. Um, and it's not for you, which is, which is fine. You know, I've met plenty of guys who have gotten into this, played around with it for a little while, and then they've gone, meh, and then they've gone on to start businesses and make thousands of dollars a week. You know, fine. It's not for everyone. This is not for everyone, you know. I think everyone could benefit from having some more skills with women, but to get in and to really make a conscious effort to approach and meet all these women, it's not for everyone. So if it is, great. If it's not, eh, cool. Um, you'll find a shit ton of excuses to not talk to anyone. These are probably what I think to be the most common ones in bars. Um, and when you say she's not hot enough, we see through that. <laughs> it's just, it's just, uh, I just don't think she's my type. I'm like, fuck off, you're scared. It's okay to be scared, just admit that you're scared. <laughs> you know, also having said that, a lot of guys are actually out there and they only want to talk to hot girls, you know. They'll be completely new at game, they'll have no conversation skills, not much personality, not much confidence, and they'll be in there trying to take like the hottest girls in the venue. But you kind of want to find somewhere in the middle, like for where you're at, you know, just if I'm in a bar, I'll talk to the hottest girls in the bar. I'll also talk to the least hottest girls in the bar. You know, if I'm in a bar getting a drink and there's some woman next to me, I'm going to ask how a night's going and what she's drinking. doesn't mean I'm going to pick her up. But what I, I find the guys that struggle in this the most are the ones who aren't willing to do that. You don't want to be the, the guy in there talking to the girls that you're not attracted to at all and then like, oh, it's safe, I'll just keep talking to her. But then you also don't want to be the dude who's starting out and picking the hottest girls ever. Like, there's a few guys that I see uh, getting around the city, and I've seen them for years, <laughs> and they're nice dudes, but every time I see them approach, and like, I'm, I'm not, no elitism here or anything, but they're, they're not bringing much to the party, and I only ever see them approaching the fucking stunners. And they're still out there, man, like, there's like, like two or three guys I can think of at the top of my head. And that's the, every time they approach, just like stunner, 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 stunner. And it's like, there's a reason you've been doing this for three years and you're probably not getting anywhere. There's a reason you've been doing this for so long and you've probably not gotten even laid yet, you know. <laughs> Cause, and there's nothing, I'm not sort of saying like lower your standards. I'm just sort of saying, just start somewhere. If I can talk to people, you know. I'll be talking to the oldest lady in the bar and go, all right, you have a good night. And then go talk to a really attractive girl. Like, you know, don't be one of those guys. Uh, she's talking or they're talking. I hear this all the time as a coach. It drives me crazy because, like, what do you expect girls to do in bars? Like, to go and just stand there and, like, not talk? Like, even girls that want to meet guys aren't going to go and just, like, stand there and not talk. 
Like, and, and usually when you do approach those girls, they're usually the coldest because they've usually got no personality. Like they're not talking to each other and you're like, hey guys, what's, you think it's easy because they're not talking to each other. You're like, hey, how are you guys? And they're like, good. It's like, whoa, this is horrible. Um, so people talking is not a reason to not go and talk to someone. Even excuse yourself, it's fine. It's like, excuse me, sorry, I had to come and ask or whatever, say whatever. Girls expect to be approached in bars. That's the beauty of night game. So everyone's going to be talking. Don't look at a group of girls or two girls or whatever and go, I'll wait till they stop talking or I can't approach them because they're talking. Everyone's going to be fucking talking. Um, and she's texting. This is, an, you know, she might be texting. She might also be fucking on Tinder. Like, are you on Tinder is one of my favorite night openers because I see so many girls just sitting there on Tinder. <laughs> like, so... It doesn't really matter. Like, one of the funniest things I hear is like, oh, she's, she's probably texting her boyfriend. It's like, how the fuck do you know that? But I hear it all the time through the day and night. No, she's waiting for a boyfriend. You don't know that. This is your brain justifying your fear. Like, we don't want to feel fear. Like, so when we feel fear, we kind of justify it. We give it some kind of like, we can't just go, I'm shitting myself. So we try and give it some kind of reason. Um, another one is like, oh, I'm just not feeling it tonight. And that's because you've not done anything yet. You've walked into a bar, you've not done anything. You've stood at the bar with your drink and just kind of freaked out for half an hour. Of course you're not feeling it. Like every time, I've been doing this for fucking 12 years or something fucking ridiculous. And still every time I go into a bar, it's like, oh, I'm here again. Uh, it's like even I have to get myself started, you know. So there's a big difference between when you start and when you've chatted with a few people. Like you just loosen up so you feel significantly better and different. Um... And the last thing that you might do tonight is you'll take it way too seriously. <laughs> you, like I said, it's not, you're not fucking addressing the UN Council here. You're just talking to people. So don't go in and do the whole, like, I'm going to do the game thing now. <laughs> like, just, just talk shit with people that you're with and, like, don't take it so seriously. It's the worst energy to have in a bar when guys are just like lapping the venue doing these ones and they've got their <laughs> fucking glass of water or they're huddled in a corner just like eyeballing the crowd. Like, just relax, let go. Even if you just say dumb shit, whatever. Like, the stupid shit we especially say in bars, it's just because just it's got to stay fun. So just ha have fun, just relax. You know, a lot of guys go out and they really want to have a, a beer or a drink, but they're like, no, I'm fucking out to pick up. Can't just have a drink just relax do what do whatever you can to make the night enjoyable because this inherently is kind of a bit it's work you know you know it's i think you can get in and have a great time if you're a bit add and you're like super super energetic but most people myself included this is still something that you're kind of like all right i'm just gonna go and do this now like it's not something like i can't wait to go out tonight that's not most people so don't feel bad if that's not you like you don't have to be like skipping through the fucking you know through the bar door um hello so this is what i think you should do tonight as opposed to what you're likely to do keep each other accountable so when you're going out in your groups of twos or threes or fours or whoever you feel comfortable with, like, motivate each other. This is, like, when I got into this, my game was kind of going like this. It was kind of getting better, doing all right. But then when I got to Melbourne and I found guys that I liked being around, just went straight up, went through the roof. Because we kept each other accountable. We used to go out every Friday and Saturday night for years in a group of four. Like, four guys, we'd just go out and... Again, we wouldn't be like, all right, here, game time. But it'd be like, all right, who's doing that? Is that yours? Come on, do it. And then someone would do it, and then it'd be the other person's turn. And it's just, it adds some kind of method to the madness, I guess. So go out, talk shit. But if you've been talking shit for like an hour, at some point you just got to go, all right, someone's got to do something. <laughs> and if your group's doing that, take charge, take the lead. That's what I did. You know, I'd go out with a group of people that I didn't know, and because I was kind of the outsider, like everyone would be chatting, I'd be like, fuck it, just going. And that's how I got started gathering a bit, of a, a bit of a following because people started realizing, oh, this dude just approaches a lot. He just talks to people oh, while we're huddled in the corner. He just talks to people, you know. So be that guy. Um, talk to anyone. Like I said, if you're out there tonight and you're feeling cold, there's no ego here. This is what I really like about pickup guys. Like if I'm out in a bar and I'm talking to like an unattractive girl, a guy who doesn't know what I'm doing but knows me, he'd be like, God, fucking, you know, he's just shit. He's talking to a not hot girl, whatever. 
but guys that are involved and know what like are interested, they know exactly what I'm doing. So I find that layer guys or pickup guys are ironically less egotistical than the general population. Like you guys will go, oh, he's just chatting with people. Cool. Like it's not. So be happy to talk to anyone. It's not like if you go out with you know three other guys tonight and you go and talk to like some chubby girl in the corner, or whatever. They're going to go, oh, fuck it. You know, they're not going to do that. And if they are, fuck them. You know. Um, in my quest to find guys to go out with, I had to go through a few people that I didn't like. There was one fucking dude that would just wait for me to approach, and then he'd just come in and just introduce it. He did it just time after time. So, and then next weekend, he was like, hey, man, you want to go out tonight? <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Let's so talk to anyone. This is what I think everyone's goal should be tonight. This is five approaches. And again, I don't want to make this stuff sound mechanical. I don't want to make it sound like, oh, uh, you know, I've got to do my five, my ten. Some people hate that, the idea of doing a certain number of approaches. I, I, I never go out and hit a certain number of approaches. I, you know, some nights I'll go out and do one or two, and other nights I'll go out and do fucking 30. But we're kind of in different places, so you guys might need something to, to aspire to, you know, so just aim to do just five approaches. It's really not that much, you know. Um, talk about things other than pick up. Um, this is a good way to find out who you really do click with and the, you know, talk about business, talk about what you do for a job. Like a lot of the guys that got involved in this back when I started, and, and I'm not joking, um, several of them are multi-millionaires because there's something about pickup and making money that it attracts the same type of person. So talk about aspirations, talk about health, talk about uh, making money, talk about what you're good at, what you suck at. Like, you know, I know a few of you guys here, so you've all got stories. Share them. Talk about what you want to do. Mine's business. I love talking about dating and women, psychology, spirituality, and business. They're my things. Like, that's what I really love talking about. So don't just be the, like, the guy that just talks about pickup over and over, like, all night. Don't be that dude. Uh, try and enjoy yourselves. Don't take it fucking seriously. Like I said, just... Don't be, don't be that dude that I mentioned before. This should be somewhat fun. Um, this may be the last thing I talk about. So here we go for time. Uh, improving your conversation. These are just a couple of points that I professionally wrote about five minutes while, before people came in. Um, so I think people that struggle with conversation the most are people who think that they are less than other people in general. Like if you see yourself on par with other people, when you're in talking to them, you're not going to care as much what they think of you. So it's the guys who always think that other people are better than them or they think that they're not as good as other people. They're the guys that always struggle with conversation, like the guys who are just like, eh, I'm pretty cool in myself, like I like myself, I like where I'm at. They're the guys that tend to do okay in conversation. So the funny thing about improving conversation is that people always want tricks. They want like something I can say or a topic when the reality is unless you kind of feel on par with the person that you're talking to, you're always going to be paranoid about what they're thinking of you. And if you're paranoid about what they're thinking of you, you're going to be, trying, you're going to be very stifled. You're going to be trying to say the right things. You're going to be like, I don't know. You can, you can go in and fuck around more. If it's, if it's, this is why a lot of you guys could have good conversations with your friends, but as soon as it's like an attractive girl in a bar or as soon as it's like a boss it's really stilted, stifled conversation because you don't see yourself as equals. So a lot, of that, a lot of conversation isn't about tricks or tactics. It's about fucking self-esteem. And as soon as you get your self-esteem up, then conversa like, conversation's easy. There's no rules to conversation. You'll hear all this fucking weird shit like, don't ever ask a question or only ask questions. Or just you'll, hear, you'll, hear, you'll see books written on conversation unless you have a reasonable self-esteem and unless you see yourself as on par with someone, you're never going to have a good conversation. I don't care if you've got... In fact, if you don't and you've memorized a bunch of conversational stuff, it's going to be super weird. Like, if, you talk, if you're talking to a girl and you're like, fuck, I hope she likes me and you're trying to do it right and you're trying to do this conversational stuff, it's going to come out really fucking weird and you won't understand why she stops talking to you because you'll just be like, I did everything right. What the fuck? So it's all self-esteem. All self-esteem. So I run out of things to say. It, I, I fucking hate when I hear this. It drives me nuts because it's just such a common cop-out, you know? Guys will come, often come back to me and go, yeah, you don't understand. Like, I just run out of things to say. It's like their perfect excuse to not even try. So 
don't don't give yourself that get out of jail free card like fuck that off like there's so many things that you can say stop saying that about yourself you haven't run out of stuff to say you've probably just freaked out and you've started overthinking it so like just stand there like i'll get some of my guys to go in and have a conversation and if they've run out of stuff to say i'm just like don't you fucking move so they'll be standing in front of the girl going like but what will happen is if you do that enough times your brain eventually is going to go oh we're not fucking off anymore i better start like I better start doing something because so long as your brain thinks, oh, I can just leave anytime I like because that's the story I've been telling myself for the last five years, you're going to do it. So just wipe that off the table. I don't care if you walk into three girls tonight and you're like, hey guys, how are you? And they go, good, how are you? And you're like, what brings you guys out? And they say, we're out after work or something. I don't care if you stand there like an idiot. That's better than just going, have a good night, which so many guys do. Take it off the table. You don't run out of things to say. You just pussy out. Um, ask questions that you actually care about. I think a lot of people... Um, you know the question train? You've probably heard that a lot. Like guys get into this and they're just like, so what are you doing out tonight? And how do you know each other? And where do you work? Oh yeah, do you like it? They just ask. Just, they're not asking questions that they actually give a shit about. They're just asking questions to feel space. They're like, I'm doing the conversation thing now. And they're just one after the other. And... They don't actually care. <laughs> like, a girl will say, yeah, I just quit my job today. And the girl will go, oh, yeah, sweet. So wh where are you going tonight? And it's like, dude, you just, you didn't even listen to what she <laughs> said. So, again, you have to know, like, ask yourself this now. What are my top three favorite things to talk about? And unless you know that, you're always going to struggle in conversation. Because it's almost like you're walking into a void. You should know those things. Like, I'll, within a minute of talking to a girl about, are you single? And not because I want to pick her up, just because I want to talk about dating. She's like, no, I have a boyfriend. I'm like, ah, oh, sweet. How long have you guys been together for? Again, I'm not trying to pick her up. That's just what I like talking about. Or I'll talk about meditation or something right away. Just that's what I'm interested in talking about. So, so many guys are going in and asking all these questions. They don't care. Like, I would never go and ask a girl where she's traveled because I don't fucking care. She could turn around and go, Uruguay, and then I was in London. I'm just like, I, I don't care. Like, I'm more interested in her dating life, in her psychology, in her upbringing. And so don't be afraid to ask what you're actually interested in. So always know what you like talking about. And that's a big thing for dates as well. If you're having really shit, boring dates, it's probably because you're trying to do it right and you're, pri and you're probably trying to say the right things rather than speaking about something that you actually enjoy. And I think when you're bored, that's when you're boring. So if you're bored on the date, if you're bored in the conversation, that's when you're going to be boring and that's when the girl's going to be bored. So I think a girl, for the most part, is more interested in um, like your, your passion and your energy and your vibe rather than the specifics of what you're... This is why one person can talk about the weather and be super funny and interesting, and another person is just boring as fuck, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's very similar. Listen to what she's giving you. I had a client just messaged me today, actually, and um, he said, hey, what do I reply to this text message? And I said, well, what do you think you should reply? And the girl said something like, hey, busy weekend ahead, just studying. Uh, what about you? And... His reply was like, cool, do you want to meet up through the week then? And I was like, oh, dude, like, if you, if you send that, it's going nowhere. Because she, she's basically just going, you're not listening to me, you know? So my reply instead of, instead of that fucking horrific message was something like, um, oh, cool. Like, and I said to him, like, do you know what she's studying? And he's like, no. I was like, dude, you're not, like, he was in such a hurry to just fucking get his dick wet. He was in such a hurry to just get the date done. You know, she's like, busy weekend, studying all this. Like, oh, cool, we'll meet through the weekend. And the girl would just go, you're, you're so desperate to just get there. You don't, she could say anything and she knows that he doesn't fucking care. So I said, dude, like, what's she studying? Like, you're not going to meet up with her for probably another four or five days anyway. So get to know her. Like, what's she studying? All that sort of stuff. So... A girl that's not interested in talking to you will generally give you very closed off questions. So you'll be like, how's your night going? Good. Who are you here with? Friends. Uh, what are you out doing tonight? Oh, just girls' night. They won't give you much. Whereas a girl that's more than happy to talk to you, um, she'll be like, um, yeah, I brought my friend out. She just broke up with her boyfriend. We work together. 
you know, so a girl that's interested in talking will give you something to work with. Um, especially through the day, I find this a lot. You know, I, I had this a couple days ago myself. I was on Uber and I was on some weird street and my fucking Uber was being shit. There's a cute girl next to me, so I was just like, hey, what street is this? And she goes, she just said the name, but she looked up at me and looked back down. I was like, okay, that's just a, that's it. That's the end of it. Whereas if she was kind of like, um, oh, hold on, let me, you know, like she's given me something a bit more. So if a girl's giving you kind of closed off things, try a little bit to, to confirm that. But if, it's, if she's, giving, she's not giving you much, just fuck off. <laughs> because a girl that's interested in talking to you will kind of help you out. She'll give you stuff to work with. And, but you've got to listen to it, you know. If she's kind of like, yeah, shit of a day, I'm a hairdresser, we came out for drinks. What have you got? You've got shit of a day, hairdresser, came out for drinks. So if you, after that, you just kind of go, oh, cool, where are you going tonight? She's going to go, you're an idiot, you don't get it. So you've got these th three things to, to use there. And I think when women say men don't listen, that's what they mean. They're like, they're not, they're listening, but they're not hearing what they're actually saying. So pay attention. Um, not moving the conversation forward. A lot of guys just talk around in circles. <laughs> so if you're anything like me, anytime a girl is interested, like interested in chatting, you should be like, I see it in my head. I see like a little lever click into like second gear. Okay, we've done this bit now. So let's move. Like I'm, I'm trying to direct the conversation. If it's night, I'm directing it to like, what's her plan for the night? And like, because I want to know, am I taking her home or am I getting a number? Like I'm, I'm edging towards that. But a lot of guys don't have com like direction in their conversation. So they just go around in circles. They keep asking shit and it just doesn't go anywhere. And then it kind of stifles out. And then they're like, what happened there? You know, I was talking, she just drifted off. It's like, yeah, because you weren't, she, she wants to follow, like you're the man, you're the leader, she wants to follow you, so direct it somewhere. If you've approached and you're chatting and it's going well, you know, you should be thinking to yourself, where am I going with this tonight? Am I, so mine generally are, who are you here with? Because that's going to tell you a lot. What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing tonight? These little things because I'm like, is, am I taking this girl home tonight? Um, or is it, you know, am I just getting a number? Like, I'm, 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 I want to know certain things. I want to know if she's single as well. Like, the amount of times guys will go in and chat with a girl for like 45 minutes and then I'll go to get a number and she was like, oh, no, I've got a boyfriend. And the guy will be like, oh, for fucks, and he'll just blow up. And it's like, well, it's your fault because you didn't find that out. Like, girls under no obligation to tell you that she's got a boyfriend within five minutes of convo. It's your job to kind of, I always see conversation as like just putting jigsaw piecel, pieces, puzzle, pe whatever things together <laughs> you know and that's kind of your job that's your job as a man to kind of put it all together and kind of go cool you know have a good chat get a phone number have a good chat leave whatever um all right i'm going to race through a couple more things very very quickly and then i'm going to get liam up um do you like yourself you have to ask this question if the question is no then going out tonight is a complete waste of time you need to go and fucking work on how you feel about yourself um if you don't like yourself, if you don't like your life, if you don't like your direction, if you don't like you know, what you do for a job, whatever, you need to fucking go and work on that because a lot of guys get into this as a substitute for dealing with that. Like They fucking hate themselves and like go pick up some girls. And it's, it just doesn't end well. Um, it doesn't end well because I, I knew I was somewhat that guy. I learned the hard way. Uh, your parents and your past relationships are the biggest indicator, in my opinion, of where you're going to go with women and your relationships. If you fucking hate your mum or, you know, you had issues with, like, an abusive dad or, uh, you know, you had a girl just shatter your heart or so, whatever it is from the past, if you don't deal with that, if you don't address that, again, going out tonight is going to be pointless. <laughs> and I coach a lot of guys like this. They've, they've got issues from their upbringing that they refuse to deal with and they're just trying to, like, meet a girl, just trying to meet a girl. And what I'll find, if, you know, if you've got a mother that, you know, with all due respect, they all try to do their best. But if she just was overbearing and you were never enough for her, well, guess what? You're never going to be enough for a girl because that's just your habitual pattern and you're going to repeat that shit. So you need to kind of fucking explore that. And that's, but that's a whole other seminar. Uh, gamers and everything. And you get a lot of guys like this. They'll rock up to sessions and they'll fucking stink or they'll rock up in just like, you know, shit clothes or, you know, I, the amount of guys that I've coached and I've gone and bought clothes with them and then they've come to sessions after wearing their old clothes. It happens all the time. It's just, you know, game's not... A, you can have the best game in the world if your breath stinks, if you fucking... if you stink. Um, you know, it's... yeah. <laughs> game's just one piece of the puzzle. And if you get all this shit sorted and then you work on your game, you can do really well. But if you just focus on game and none of this shit, like, you know, if you don't exercise or you don't feel good about yourself or whatever, 
Yeah, it ain't going to help you. Your habits, I always bang on about having daily or weekly habits to help you. Every morning I wake up, the first thing I do is meditate. Then I go to the park and I do sprints. Then I come back and always on my laptop I'm having fucking uh, subliminals running. Like then I meditate later in the day. Like my day, every single day I have strategic habits. And I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just, I can generally tell where someone's at in life by the amount of habits that they have in place. You know, your habit might be reading a book a week, whatever it is. If you don't have any habits in place, there's a fair chance you're probably not doing much by way of like success with money or women or life or, or whatever. So um, just take 100% responsibility for your life. Like I said before, um, everything that you are and everything that you have is because of you. It's not because of anyone else. It's not because of your parents. Not because of that girl that broke your heart. It's not because of that bully at school. It's not because of anyone. It's you. It's you. There's no one else to play. It's you. If you're in a good place, you. Bad place, you. Everything is you. Exactly where you're going in life, all you. But the benefit of that is because it's all you, you can change all that, you know? So I see a lot of guys get involved in this and like, it's okay for you. You're confident. Like, you didn't have my upbringing. And it's like, how long are you going to use that for? How long are you going to use that fucking excuse for? It drives me nuts when guys don't take responsibility for their own life. So pretty much it from me. Uh, any questions? I'll take maybe a couple if there's any. Otherwise, I'll get this guy out. Again, I think it comes down to your habits. Like the reason I get up and I, you know, I do yoga 